Hello and welcome everyone to another session in the Data Art series. We are thrilled to be here with you this evening for a session full of action-packed learning. I'm Ashu Ghosh, part of the data science team at Analytics with Deer. For those who have joined us for the first time, a brief introduction to the Data Art session. The Data Art is a series of webinars conducted by Analytics with Deer and led by top industry experts. It is a fun way to understand the concepts of data science from the leading players in the data tech domain. And as the name suggests, it is it's one art dedicated to data. We are hopeful that these sessions are going to be a great source of enrichment and value adding for our community members. Now, on to our session today, which is AI and ML in the automotive industry. The use of AI ML in automotive industries has increased rapidly. Now, industries are using AI and ML in all the major processes. In this data, Abhishek Raj Parmani will talk about many such use cases like self-driving cars, predictive maintenance, improved safety, and many more. He will also explain the different advanced driver assistance system features which are being used in current cars at the different levels of autonomous cars. I hope you are excited to attend this data hour with us. Before we kick things off and I hand it over to our speaker, a quick recap of the housekeeping items. First, we are recording the session and we'll make the recording available in a few days on our YouTube channel. Second, Please use the QA section for asking any questions you might have during this session. And we will do our best to answer them as the data are progresses or towards the end. Third, also, we will share a poll about the feedback of the session towards the end of the session, which I request you all to kindly fill up. Now, on to our speaker in this session of data art, we have Abhishek Raj Parmani with us. Abhishek is currently working as a machine learning engineer with Jaguar Land Rover. He's a computer science graduate from IIT. In the past, he has worked with Samsung Research and Development Institute of India in the data science team. Till now, he has presented three data science papers in international conferences. He is not only a researcher, but also a mentor to more than 2,000 students. Through his data structure and algorithm courses and various live sessions, he has always given back to the community. Over to you, Abhishek. The virtual stage is all yours. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you very much for this introduction and for having me on the session. Okay. So, okay. I'll start by sharing. Can, uh, can you? Allow me to share my screen. I am unable to do that. Okay, until the uh, all these things will do. Uh, I think now I have. Okay, cool. Hello, guys. Okay, so before starting to the session, what we can do is uh, it would be great if you can uh, mention your name or um, which year you are from or uh, what background you come from or which company you are currently working in if you are already passed out. So just mention all these things in the chat so that I can get an idea what type of uh, crowd I am uh, we have today. Okay, so yeah, we'll also answer all your questions. So. Don't need to worry about that. Uh, I can see, yeah. Okay. Great, let me shift it to here. Okay. Now I can, yeah. Hi Kapil, hi, hi Chandra, hello. Okay. Cool, cool guys. And, from electrical okay 
most most of you seems to be msc or uh, a statistics students m tech student as well tech in data science okay msc in data science and computing okay great okay this seems good and uh, let me change position of my screens we'll start with that okay so it might look that i am uh, talking i am looking into another screen and my camera is here okay, but my ppt is open on this side and i'm my camera is on this side okay so kindly bear with that okay entrepreneur from iran okay great hello everyone okay so let's start the session then we have everything set okay let me know in the chat uh, uh if you if my screen is visible and then we can start yeah okay visible yeah cool okay then so i hope my screen with presentation is visible right anyone yeah okay cool so here we are with the very interesting and very uh, topic which is very close to me uh, from last one 1.5 years and uh, so let's see what we'll cover in this session so it will be uh, i will give you an idea and overview about uh, what is artificial intelligence what is machine learning and uh, what is autonomous this automotive industry so we'll go through the basics from that and we'll not go much in detail in artificial intelligence machine learning because they analytics with they already has sessions on that when that are very good so i have also seen few of them so they are very good so you can go through them as, uh, for going in detail on that and uh, then we'll come to more detail on the automotive side uh, that's what because that's because i am here and uh, what lies ahead of us like in the automotive industry what is ahead for us and there is some amazing fact that most of you and i i was also not aware about when i joined okay so what is artificial intelligence so uh, it's basically the ability of a computer to think and learn that's the book definition and that i found on wikipedia on some platform i guess so basically it's an ability of computer to think and learn as simple as that uh, there are three parts involved one is learning Uh, another one is reasoning and another one is uh, self correction so in terms of learning we have uh, taking taking and acquiring data and then creating some algorithms out of that data okay the algorithms can be of uh, many types you have uh, you have seen you you know many of the algorithms of machine learning so like regression or uh, some computer vision algorithms so all those algorithms we can use on that data and we can get the uh, supposed output proposed output okay so create learning in is that phase then reasoning comes then chooses the right algorithm now there are many algorithm like linear regression multiple uh, all those regressions algorithms are there clustering algorithms are there so which all well which algorithm is suited for which type of data that you need to figure out or uh, which algorithm will give the best output that you require okay so that we need to check out that comes in the reasoning part and third one is the self correction that is fine tuning of the parameters of the algorithm to give the more accurate result so that is the part of self correction okay so uh, yeah so that is a overview idea of what artificial intelligence is so let me tell you how the session will go and how i like to take the sessions generally uh, so uh, i start with the session uh, and will take will take the content what i have prepared and once that is done i have in the end the q and a part as well so when that is done uh, you can okay okay cool i'll switch to that mm. okay now i think it's good right mm, i don't know why this is coming Um, no i can't switch to slide mode because it would cover th this is maximum i can do because it would cover uh, it is covering my other slide as well that is problematic for me because i can't see your questions on that so uh, during the session as well you can write your questions in the chat and i will 
take that if that is related to that current slide i will take that start taking that question or if that that doesn't disturb our flow okay uh, but uh, i will take the question in the end if you have some question you can uh, write in the chat and we'll take it the end so no need to worry about that okay so that was an idea of artificial intelligence now comes machine learning so many people are confused about machine learning and artificial intelligence i was also confused in my college days but now uh, when you deep dive into what machine learning and artificial intelligence is uh, through various sources you will find that artificial intelligence is the subset of the machine sorry machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence that uses statistical methods okay uh, again it can be of uh, regression it can be of uh, some clustering methods or algorithm that it uses to improve the results basically on the training data okay so now the types of machine learning are so ai is a bigger picture and machine learning is a smaller picture compared to that and in machine learning we have a subset called deep learning okay so that's how it works ai is a bigger picture than machine learning and then deep learning so that's how it works and machine learning now the types of machine learning are supervised unsupervised and reinforcement supervised uh, where we use the labeled data okay where the data is correctly labeled like uh, let's say there is a data of cats and dogs so that's very famous example you all of you have must have heard that so let's the data of uh, cats and dogs and it is clearly mentioned that this this picture belongs to cat and this picture belongs to dog so that uh, algorithm can clearly identify okay this is cat and this is dog and it can retain or it can create some features uh, the algorithm can create some features okay cat has these types of nose cat has these types of like triangle shape uh, ears or something it it develops some features so that it can identify a distinction between cats and dogs so that's the part of machine learning and that algorithm creation comes under what we saw earlier that is reasoning part okay or learning part you can say like reasoning is then again picking up the algorithm okay so that's how it works and so supervises having the labeled data okay and unsupervises having the unlabeled data and the unsupervised learning algorithms will make kind try to make some clusters out of it okay it will try to make some clusters out of it so that uh, you can clearly identify what are cats and what are dogs but again the data given to supervised learning algorithms are not labeled okay it is it would it won't be clearly mentioned that these are cats and these are dogs okay okay reinforcement learning now reinforcement learning has something to do with uh, uh, rewards and penalty system so let's say uh, you are a uh let let so in the reinforcement learning uh let me consider myself as an agent and everything other than me is a environment okay so let's say i'm taking this session so i am doing an action by taking a taking this session so i may get rewarded or penalized based upon my action based upon my taken taken action okay so that's how the reinforcement learning works there is a system there is an agent and everything uh, other than agent is a in its its environment and agent does some action on the environment and it takes the agent to some other state okay while moving towards other state it has taken an action now this action can have penalty or reward getting my point it has penalty or reward so if it has reward now the system will learn or the algorithm will learn okay this is a good action and i can do this so so that's because i will get rewarded or if it is a wrong action it will get penalized let me give an example of self driving car it's not how completely the self driving car works but to give you an idea of what reinforcement learning is so let's say the self driving car is moving on the road and there is a pedestrian in front of it on the road and let's say self driving car in the initial stage hits the pedestrian and now this is the action taken by the self driving car so consider self driving car as an agent now it has it hit the pedestrian and now pedestrian now this action taken by the self driving car will be penalized will be the algorithm of the self driving car will be penalized for this action obviously it will be penalized so now in the future when the self driving car sees a pedestrian it will not hit the pedestrian it will remember okay i in yes uh, before i was penalized for this taking the action so it will uh, either stop the car or it will uh, turn change its lane or go or other side okay again it depends upon the algorithm but uh, getting a point reward and penalize system is what makes the algorithm better and better so that's where the reinforcement learning comes 
Okay, so I hope you got the idea about AI and ML and what's the difference between AI and ML. So everything that is covered in machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence. That is in short. And machine learning has something to do with statistical methods, which is uh, training of the data and then uh, putting some algorithm on the data and getting the proper output. So there are three types of uh, or two types of data that we majorly deal with. Uh, that is one is trained data and the second one is test data. So trained data is when we so when we get the data. OK, so when we get the data out of it, let's say we get a data of uh, let's say 10 lakh, 10 lakh Mm, let's say vehicle images we get. Okay, so we'll keep 40% of this data for the training set and 60% for the test set. Again, this uh, ratio or this uh, proportion depends upon algorithm to algorithm and organization to organization or again, use case to use case for that matter. So 40% and 60% is taken separately. And on the 40% of the data, you will train the algorithm. Training means you will test the algorithm. You will develop the algorithm. You, you, the algorithm during this stage will develop its features, will develop the parameters and all those things. The algorithm will get ready and you will choose the algorithm on that training by training on the data. And once that is done, you will test the algorithm on this test data because this test data is something which algorithm has not seen so far. So that will be very helpful for algorithm to fine tune and to make minute minute changes so that it can get better to the unknown data as well. Because ultimately what your aim is to give a better algorithm for the unknown data, not for the known data. Okay. Every time in real life, you won't face situation that is already seen by you. So that's where the point lies for the algorithm. Okay. So training data and test data. That's the two things. So these are the basics of AI and ML. So so that uh, if any one of you don't uh, have an idea about AI and ML, this is what AI and ML looks like. OK, now quickly jump into the automotive industry. What automotive industry is? You must have cars or you must have seen cars at least. The automotive industry includes industry associated with production, wholesaling, retailing, maintenance of motor vehicles. Motor vehicles can be uh, two wheelers and four wheelers. Okay, so again, we in the session will mostly focus on four wheelers, that is cars. Okay, so uh, can you guess in the chat, uh, what's the approximate line of code that you think uh, will a modern car have? I'm not talking about the completely self-driving car that is still a dream for many companies, but a normal modern car has which has a good infotainment system and uh, good features based on the software what what you think will have lines of code uh, you can predict in like like numbers like 10000 lines of code or millions billions 100 billion 10 million something like that 10 million okay a wild guess would be enough and believe me if you guess if you are guessing that you will be uh, getting a good answer out of that Okay, so many zeros to learn. Okay, others, what do you think? 10 million. Hundred K, okay. 10 K. Thousands of code, okay. Any other wild guesses? Okay, so uh, I'll paste a link in the chat. Okay, and And here you go. So I think this is visible to everyone. Yeah, everyone it is going to. Yeah. So this is the, um, if it is connected to real time analysis, it can be a few lines. Okay. Okay. Let's see how many lines. So uh, basically, if you go up, uh, Google Chrome has this 10 million. This is in millions. OK, so Google Chrome has 10 million. The source is clearly visible, uh, which I'm dealing with. Uh, so Google Chrome has around 10 million line of code. And Linux kernel has around, uh, let's say, five or six million lines of code. OK, and uh, what you say? 
so if you are working for an it company if you want to work for an it company it it there are high very high chances that you might uh, end up working on driverless cars or like evs or everything okay because and if you are working for nvidia nvidia has this this alag team separate team working on that okay so with the testing underway by companies including tesla and ford and the uk arrivals and berlin based web fully autonomous vehicles will likely become a reality in years to come okay while testing and infrastructure and legislation legislation that is a main problem the industry will face in a completely uh, driverless future or future is uh, likely decades away as it says it is quoted on the internet okay and lower level of self driving technology are already widespread as you can see so basically the cars we drive at this point like you may take l i10 or hyundai or the normal car we drive on the road the consumer vehicles uh, we drive they are also having some l1 feature so l1 is very basic where do you don't have any autonomous kind of feature you just have some basic infotainment system or some lines of code that uh, that that would help in the all, all the software like you can say it's it's like uh, you you now the cars are getting buttons okay the remote you are getting for the car so all those features have some lines of code so there is l1 level and l2 level what we drive so tesla is building l3 and l4 level so l5 level is something which we want every automobile automotive company wants to achieve in the self driving space okay so features some features like uh, lane assistance and self parking and tesla's autopilot are example of existing autonomous uh, vehicle technology so that was for the fully autonomous vehicles and now if you move towards the electric and low emission vehicles uh, ai is also helping uh, engineers to develop the next generation of uh, electric and low emission vehicles and thanks to machine learning models uh, that can rapidly predict how batteries will respond under different conditions and engineers are uh, iterating on fast charging technology so there has been a lot of research uh, going by other companies like apple is investing nvidia is investing so much heavily in the universities and in the companies uh, on the batteries itself the research is going on on the how to use ai and ml in batteries and in all those vehicles is a, a lot of research and all, all a lot of money has been invested in and so fast charging is another space we are looking at and so intelligent charging infrastructure will help drivers of the future ensure that they will never run out of the power so that is uh, the if you have seen the example of uh, i think cyber trucks was there by tesla uh, where if you apply brakes it will convert the kinetic energy to the electrical energy and something like that so it will uh, other it will somewhat charge the battery itself when an driver applies a brake on the cyber truck or the i think the trucks developed by the tesla i was going through some video other day so that's the research amount of research is going on to help the automotive companies and vehicle design and testing it's another feature it's another domain that ai and ml is useful to the automotive industry like traditional vehicle design and testing is costly and time consuming and ever so especially when significant problems aren't identified okay uh, until after a physical vehicle is built okay so until we find a very physical damage uh, so vehicle design and testing are very difficult task in that but uh, computer modeling has typically been used to play out specific scenarios with artificial intelligence for cars automotive engineers can model uh, that perfectly mirror every aspect that mirrors the uh, every aspect of the vehicle design and test the vehicle under realistic and dynamic scenarios long before it is already been built okay so these all uh, computer modeling systems and uh, using ai and ml i don't know much in the detail of the modeling aspect because the kind of work i do is more on the self driving cars and for the what you say on the camera module and all those things okay so but there is a lot of research going in that direction and ai and ml is helping a lot that now again manufacturing equipments is something while traditional assembly line like robots are not examples of ai new ai application being used on the manufacturing floor i revolutionize revolutionize how cars are produced 
okay so like, like bmw for example uses ai powered robots to build con, uh, to build custom cars and autonomously transport their materials transport their materials while avoiding uh, moving objects and people okay so that's where they are cutting their cost as well as using the ai and ml to transport vehicles and autonomously do all these things okay now since these tools are powered by neural networks again a type of uh, ai technology they continue to learn from their environment that's how their algorithm is built on and allowing them to adapt more quickly to challenges that arise so that's how it is helping in manufacturing equipment and now moving on to the quality control part since no manufacturing system is perfect as you know it's essentially to it's essential to quickly uh, identify components and the cars that don't uh, meet brand standards okay and uh, audi uses computer vision to identify uh cracked parts so that is very interesting you you can see audi uses its crack it uses computer vision systems to identify the cracks okay so that's where the things are getting interested nowadays and posh uses uh, ai during testing to identify noises so there is a separate team called audio nostics that work on uh, that has the data of audios okay and ai can also identify detects up to 90% more efficiently than human because already you know there are human errors and there are uh, limitation to human behavior and testing and their sense okay but for ai and ml they keep on learning from humans and from uh, their environment and the challenges they face okay so that's where the automotive industry is benefited by the use of ai and ml so i think now let us see what ADAS means. So most of you, how many of you have uh, heard about this term ADAS? Quickly, uh, let's do a survey in the chat. How many of you have done this? Yeah, no. Like uh, if if I want to name some few cars like XUV700 has some ADAS features. And uh, there are, I don't remember other cars. In the consumer, we can like all those Jaguars and Land Rovers and all those cars have ADS features, but I don't remember the names of the consumer vehicle, low end consumer vehicle that has ADS features. Yeah, Tesla and all those higher stand, high high end cars have these features, but XUV 700 is I have I have seen some videos of XUV 700s having adaptive cruise control, and I think navigation system is also there, and autonomous uh, like MG cars has this automatic emergency pro braking system as well so mg and xcb 700 if you get the time after the session you can google it and you will find a lot of videos so so let's come back to the slide and what ADAS means so almost all vehicle accidents caused by the human error which can be avoided by uh, so basically ADAS stands for advanced driver assistance systems and the role of ADAS is to prevent the deaths and injuries by reducing the number of car accidents and the serious impact of those that can cannot be avoided by the like human make errors and ADAS systems can help them to reduce these kind of errors. Okay. So let us understand each term one by one. So all these are the examples: adaptive cruise control, automatic parking, and navigation system, and automatic emergency braking. So all those are uh, example of ADAS feature. There are many tons of ADAS features that uh, at this point automotive industry uh, provides to the consumers okay so there are many autonomous features like it has features sorry and so let us understand one by one some of them are very obvious and by its name like automatic parking it uh, helps to inform divers of uh, unseen areas uh, so that so they know when to turn the steering and when to stop okay and audi has that feature i have seen that Audi has their features. You can Google it and you will find that. And vehicles equipped, so vehicles are basically equipped with uh, rear view cameras and uh, have a better view of their surrounding than the traditional side mirrors. Okay. And such systems can even complete parking automatically uh, without driver's help by combining the input of multiple sensors. So basically, ADAS uh, involves the use of sensors and cameras. So there are many types of sensors, there are many types of cameras. Okay, so it involves the use of sensors and cameras. So one thing you all might have seen, uh, I have also the wagon I have at my home. Uh, there is a system when we are taking 
like in the we are in the reverse case and we are taking back we are taking car at the back and there is something on the back side and the car starts it's the peep sound in the car starts or the distance is calculated in baleno as well uh, in vagana it has feature and in new i10 i think it also has this feature that the beep sound starts and there is a distance calculation that is been so it is all it is an ids feature and uh, i think you have seen that right guys anyone experience that anyone has experienced that feature or while taking back in the car no yes yes okay cool so that feature comes under ads as well okay it's not mentioned here but it comes under ads because anything that uses sensor than cameras and which is uh, which reduces uh, which reduces the chances of deaths and injuries and accidents in the car that comes under ads basically so yeah and automatic parking it is obvious by the name it helps the drivers using the cameras to do that and uh, navigation system car navigation systems uh, provide on screen instructions voice and uh, voice prompts to help the driver follow a route while concentrating on the road so on the dashboard on the, above on the dashboard there is a win uh, on the what to say on the mirror you will see the navigation system now nowadays it's printed i don't have this image but you can see the above the dashboard you have this navigation system uh, will be displayed on the screen so now nowadays it's changing and changing because uh, while you are driving the car you don't you have to see it on the outside and you can't focus on the road so now the company has provided it on the above the dashboard it is print it it will get displayed the navigation system will get displayed on the above the dashboard so that you can focus on the road and you can see the navigation system as well so that's where the innovation and research is going on so automatic emergency braking again it uh, automatic it uses sensors to detect whether a driver is in process of hitting another vehicle or the other objects on the road so it automatically applies the brake okay so mg has that feature i know that and i think xcv700 also has that feature need to confirm that so and uh, adaptive cruise control is very important feature so let's say you are driving on the highway so basically what happens in the drive on the highway if you have if you have driven there like the cars are very far like comparatively far there is con comparatively less traffic on the highways so you need to uh, drive for so long period and uh, so it's very difficult to monitor their speed and other cars over a long period of time getting my points and the accidents are very sudden okay and let's say you there the road is completely empty and you want to just relax sit back and relax while driving the car continuously so what you can do is uh, this adaptive cruise control uh, control uh, can automatically accelerate and slow down and at times to stop the vehicle depending on the actions and other objects in the intermediate area so you will set a uh, send set a particular distance that you need from the car in the front let's say 50 meter 100 meter you can set and the and you can leave the steering as it is and the adaptive cruise control will uh, change the lane some in some cases and can also lower uh, and uh, and increase the speed depending upon the distance from the front vehicle you have set okay so you can you can put your hands down on from the steering and you can relax but again uh, these uh, having these features can sometimes be very dangerous because again these are not 100% we are not in the l5 level of autom autonomous vehicles so that can be sometimes dangerous but again it's a feature so we can use that so i hope ads was clear for you like what ads is and uh, what all things are covered in ads and you get an idea now you might have some topic to discuss with your friends and with your colleagues that okay you know this is a ads feature and this is not the ads feature and you know what is ads feature so it now it's becoming very common and it's very good to see that people's people now understanding what ads is and uh, i was i was talking to one of my friends who was not aware uh, we generally don't talk on the automotive side i don't we don't talk on the work but uh, he Come comes up with oh, okay, Bishay. You know what ADS is. ADS has this, this, this. So I was, I was working. I, I was, I am working in the ADS team itself in JLR. And uh, 
so i have a very surprise now the common people also know what a dash is so it's a very industry centric term but now the common people thanks to all those companies like tata motors mahindra and all those companies who are bringing those things up in the market so common people are also knowing this term so it's very good to see that india is progressing on this side so yeah so let's move on to what lies ahead ahead of us so uh, this is the number of cars that will be fully autonomous by 2030 and as you can see the growth is exponential and uh, all the big car companies are all the big it companies as well are investing in autonomous cars like tesla is obviously there and google is there apple is there so apple cars are there so there are many surveys going on so there was one survey that people would like to take a apple car than buying a tesla car so there was one survey on the internet i found the other day so that's the thing so apple is entering into that market i think apple is uh, collaborating with kia i think on this on this i'm not sure though uh, is collaborating with kia for that and so yeah this is this is the new vehicle market share of autonomous vehicle so by 2030 it would be something around as you can see it would be uh, fully autonomous or conditionally autonomous again conditionally autonomous now you can uh, now you know that what are the level of autonomicity Like it's L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. So mostly autonomous vehicles are from L3, L4. It starts from L3 to L4. That like Tesla is L3, L4 level of autonomous. Okay, and L5 that Tesla is building on and working on. So L3 and L4. The main problem. So many companies, including all those companies like luxury brands as well, like Mercedes, Audi, and all those things, uh, all those companies has L3, L4 level of autonomous. cars but the main problem with them or with the industry complete is that we are having a limited amount of data and the rules and regulations that are very important to run on the roads the autonomous vehicle are very limited and they have not been set properly okay like uh, the other day i was reading an article the tesla car collides with some uh, showroom get into the showroom the autopilot mode it was on autopilot mode and it kill kill some people so that was the news in china it was also the case i have seen that video so it's very horrifying like how the uh, these things are working but uh, again so that's the problem lies like it can be only the problem is of testing the, you have the algorithm you have the data on train data but now we, what is the test data the test data is the real life okay you have the test data but again it is limited Ch- facing the real life situations like uh, uh there is an art, there was a news i was reading like tesla uh, the tesla car identifies sun or sun i think it was sun or yellow moon i guess uh, on the evening it identifies that and it basically uh, detect it as a yellow light and it slows the vehicle slows down so that is now very dangerous like vehicle is slowing down on a normal road and it identifies it as a traffic signal okay yellow traffic signal so it slows down the vehicle so now this is very uh, what to say now this is the lack of uh, the test data or the accuracy you can say so this accuracy term is very important uh, in our automotive industry so that's where many companies and all those companies are struggling with so we need a real life data but we can't test it on the road because it is very dangerous for humans right because it is not fully l5 level but again l5 level needs to be tested on the road but we can't test it on the road because we have rules and regulations for that and it can be very dangerous consequences for human so that's the problem uh, all those uh, the industry is figuring out then again covid came and the supply chain was disturbed for all those companies and due to semiconductor shortage and supply chain were disturbed now supply chain in supply chain we also use ai and ml and that is helping a lot to regain the supply chain and to getting it more smooth so this is what lies ahead of us now amazing fact was there was a company there is a company sorry there is a company called carvana uh, it is an online uh, online used car retailer store in arizona and the company is fastest growing online car used dealer in the united states and it is known it is known for its multi story car vending machine so you must have seen vending machines for like chips or uh, cans like pepsi can coca cola cans all those things we have seen vending machines in our offices and in public places but there is a vending machine for the cars that is something which i was not uh, aware of few months back 
so but when i read this article so it was very amazing that there is a comp- there is a company who is building who is building the vending machine for the cars and you can literally if you go on the youtube and you type uh, carvana a vending machine and you will see the video there is a coin basically there is a coin i can't show it on the here because i think it might get copyright uh, so there is a you will get a coin and then when you put the coin in the vending machine there is a door in the vending machine you when you put the coin uh, it detects and it detects it gets inside just like we order on something from the vending machine the car will come le- slowly come down and on the exit it will the car will come down automatically so that's how the vending machine of the car works so it it was very interesting and hope hopefully someday we'll experience that in real life so yeah i think that was all from my side and uh, yeah thank you and i'm open for questions if you have and yeah yeah how to take a uh, career ahead on automotive industry aml okay so, cool sorry to disturb you abhishek yeah, 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 but please. before we proceed to answer the questions i would like to request the attendees to please fill in the poll about feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sessions okay yeah guys please fill the poll uh, they are the analytics with there is working like anything i am i'm really glad that uh, to connect with the analytics with the community okay so yeah how to take career uh, ahead of i had on automotive aml okay kapil so if you search on linkedin or if you search on google like how many companies uh, how how many companies are there okay how many companies are there who are working in automotive industry and on the software side as well so you will get nvidia you will get google google is also hiring for software engineers who want to work on the automotive car or self driving cars so that's the point so how to take forward is learn aiml learn data science there is a lot of scope of data science and aiml because i have been taking sessions on ai and ml and data science nowadays so you can learn all those things like sources are available analytic with there is one such a great source they have very good blogs and everything so once you get the idea you can directly apply to the uh, automotive companies okay that's the thing like again there are few things which they might require that is very industry specific but again uh, they consider all those things okay so but ai ml knowledge of ai ml would be must i think and again uh, i have worked in matlab as well so if you know matlab if you are someone who is working in matlab you have the chance you there are uh, they, like there is a system engineering domain as well where you have where we use uh, matlab okay so you have that chance as well so you can if you are someone working on matlab you can apply as then as well so just go to linkedin and search for uh, companies autonomous companies which are auto, automotive companies that hire for software engineers uh, let if i want to name few that would be jaguar land rover is there uh, mercedes benz is there and i think rolls royce also hire from india i am talking about india specifically uh, audi also hires bmw group also hires and aptiv is there so there are luxury brands and there are some companies which provide services to all those companies okay so nvidia that are very important nvidia is there nvidia is there and then aptiv is there and uh, Mm, Harman is there, and uh, there are other companies. I'm not remembering their much names, but again, you can if you go through the if I have that link handy, I'll share in the end. There are hundreds of companies which are hiring, uh, automotive companies which are hiring in India for software engineers and all those domains. So you can look into that as well. You can directly Google and you will find the list. Yeah, is mechanical engineering and data science a good combo considering automotive field is a future trend? Yeah. definitely it's a, it would be a great combo actually because you have the idea of the cars and mechanical side as well and you have the uh, domain knowledge of data science so it would be really great because now you have the practical idea of the field and you have the software that you can use that practical idea so it would be great pandey yeah thank you sandeep thank you thank you john thank you aditi yeah we can connect on linkedin or you can directly mail if you have anything um 
any questions if if it was if you are not getting at this point you can directly mail me or you can connect me on linkedin directly search my name on google and you will find the linkedin id identify the edge detection and the neighboring pixels and sun traffic lights it'll get properly identified yeah 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 that's what they are working on because the tesla hires very good engineers they hire from phds they hire from very good engineers okay so that's what they are working on they have they know all these things they have but again the accuracy and real life exposure because uh, sometimes on the road you will face some situation which is not the part of the training data or the test data itself so on the real on the road you face such situations okay so again the, the or algorithm need to learn that so yeah mm, okay i think or uh, sleeping during AI features to take snap of sleeping or yeah 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 there is a uh, i think a drowsy, drowsiness feature uh, lazy drowsiness or something feature like that on the autonomous car itself or i think it's a feature of ads we were i was also working on this so it detects the also i was working on like it detects the red eye redness of the eyes or some something so that it can uh, directly uh, ask the driver to consult a doctor or to go to uh, or to take rest something like that because again it is the part which can create accidents so you just anything which can create uh, accident with and the we can create a feature out of that yeah mm, where you go with the linkedin profile of mine okay is predict maintenance is time okay uh not exactly time series ashutosh ashutosh okay ashutosh it's not exactly time series but again somewhat related to that i have not worked much on predictive maintenance so can't comment much on that in detail but you can google it and you will definitely find it at now nowadays tons of data is available on internet for automotive industry earlier uh, few years back it was not the case now everyone most many of them are working for auto, automotive industry there are many many benefits of working for automotive industry okay great then guys uh, do poll uh, do complete your poll and how you like the session how you like the ppt uh, and we can they can organize more session and they are they have been organizing sessions a good number amount number of sessions so yeah do support them anything else anyone wants to ask I'll be grateful yeah ashutos you can go on yeah. so thanks a lot abhishek on the app analytics today i would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful session i'm sure our audience found it insightful and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future yeah sure would be loved would love to do that yeah i hope you guys have filled the feedback poll if not i request you to please fill the poll and if you wish to conduct a webinar or are facing difficulty in registering connect with us the recording of the session will be available in a day on our youtube channel okay so we'll be back with another session of the data hour on september 20 the link is in the chat section till then bye bye and keep learning thank you Thank you.